see. F is for fire that burns down the whole town. Use for uranium bombs. N is for no survivors. When you Langton, those things aren't what fun is all about. Hello, my name is Austin Lehman, and welcome to the next edition of Austin Weekend. Here with me once again is Dad, and this is our first top list that we've ever done. Mm-hmm. This is a continuation of SpongeBob Weekend. So we're going to do our top... 15 SpongeBob episodes. We were going to try to do the top 10, but there was too, too many, many good, good episodes. episodes. So... So we, we we felt bad about leaving some of them out of the top 10, so we thought we're going to stretch it to a top 15. So we have a top 15 episodes. Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. So do you want to go ahead and start? We're going to start at number 15 and work our way down to number 1. So number 15 is... Doodle Bob. Yes, number 15 is Doodle Bob. What a great episode. It is a, it is a really good episode. They, they have the magic pencil that falls down and uh, Doodle Bob sort of takes over yeah. <laughs> using yeah. the pencil as a... SpongeBob accidentally draws him and then he just goes completely crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're drawing all kinds of stuff, but then they draw a SpongeBob and he turns into Doodle Bob. So he takes over, but it's a really funny episode. Especially the one with the bowling with Patrick, like Doodle Bob throws a bowling ball that he sketched and then Patrick comes up and then like, <laughs> yeah. Patrick comes up and then he hits him and it goes like a bowling ball and then it says, strike. Strike. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's, uh, yes, that, that was good. That was a, that was a, that was a really good episode. Uh, uh, okay, you want to go ahead to number 14? Yes. Okay, number 14 is... I'm with Stupid. I'm with Stupid is 14. number 14. And it's basically about... Patrick's supposed parents coming around to visit him. Mm -hmm. And then he enlists Spongebob to be an idiot. And make him look smart. Yeah, he wants to impress his parents, so he asks SpongeBob to act like an idiot, so he can look smart in front in in uh, front of his parents. And SpongeBob sort of gets tired of it because Patrick really, really, really takes it too far. Really takes it too far, treating SpongeBob like he's an idiot. And then it turns out yeah, they weren't his parents. They weren't even his parents to begin with, which is really, which is really funny. That's just, the whole Starfish families are just <laughs> morons. <laughs> yeah. But I like that moment where Spon where Pat SpongeBob was complaining to Patrick, and then Patrick had an "I'm with stupid" shirt, and he was pointing to SpongeBob's uh, direction. Yeah. I'm with stupid, yeah. And then the classic "I'm with stupid" shirt. And how it ends is like SpongeBob snaps, just runs right out of that, right out of that Patrick's little rock, mm -hmm. and then his supposed parents just go off. Yeah. All right, and we'll go on to number 13. Number 13 is... Bubble Buddy. Yep, number 13 is Bubble Buddy. Which... Where SpongeBob decides to blow up a friend of his own mm -hmm. of bubbles. SpongeBob is a bubble-blowing master. Yes, he, he is. He can blow anything with a bubble. A cab... It don't an matter. An elephant. An elephant. He can blow water. But in this case, he makes himself a buddy. And he takes him everywhere and does everything with him and makes the entire town mad at him because it's just a bubble. But yeah. then it turns out... He's actually alive. He's actually alive. <laughs> which is a running... You know, the townspeople are wanting to get rid of him at the end. With a needle. They come at him with a needle yeah. to, to <laughs> pop the bubble. Pop the bubble. Pop, pop the, the bubble. bubble. Yeah. Pop the Pitch bubble. Pitchforks and flames and everything. <laughs> you know, like he's a monster to pop the bubble. Yeah. So uh, there's a funny moment here with mm -hmm. Patrick with bu Bubble Buddy giving Mr. Krabs bubble money. <laughs> oh yeah. He he got got all the food and then Mr. Krabs is all happy about making all the money and then it gives him gives him bubble money. It makes him <laughs> of course you know Mr. Krabs loves money so much that makes him angry. <laughs> 
But that's a really good episode. That's a really solid effort. Okay, now we're going to go to number 12. So number, number 12, 12 is... The Mermaid and Man and Barnacle Boy episodes. Yeah, there's actually four of those episodes, and all of them are good in their own way. We didn't want to put one in and leave another one out, so we're so we're putting all four of those episodes in the number 12 slot. What's your favorite Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy? Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy 4, but I, I was like you. I didn't want to put all of them in different slots, so it would be unfair to the other episodes. No, I think they're really good. The one where Patrick does the wombo. <laughs> what? Well, if you can say "eh" for many, when you say "w" for, for Wombo. Wombo, yes, SpongeBob <laughs> shrinks everybody down into a little jar, carries them around, and the ah 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 ah, ah she just shrinks everybody. That's really. Funny. My favorite part was when he was using that invention against Squid, Mermaid Man's belt against Squidward, like he was turning everything, like ah ah. Oh ah, yeah, ah, turning, ah, changing him into everything. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> One of my favorite Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boys is when uh, there's the 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 manta. Man Ray. Man Ray, yeah, that's him. Man Ray. And he has a wallet, and it's Patrick's wallet, and he says, uh, this is your wallet. No, it's not. It's got your, is this your name? Yeah. Does this is your, yeah, is this your, sir? okay, this is your wallet. No. <laughs> <laughs> it makes me really, really angry. That is one of my favorite that's moments my in favorite. cartoon history. That's, that's definitely one of my, I'll, that, yeah, that's one of those that I'll re remember forever. But there's lots and lots of Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy. Moments you could talk for thirty minutes just on those four episodes, but but we won't drag it out. We won't drag it out. This, these episodes are really good. Yeah. And now we're going to go to number eleven, which is fun. F is for friends who do stuff together. U is for you and me. And it's for everyone and any time at all down, down here in the deep blue sea. F is for fire that burns down the whole time. U is for uranium bombs. And is for no survivors when you plankton. That's not how it that's goes. That's not how it goes. And that's, that's all. That's enough said. That's enough that said on that number 11 is awesome. fun. And number, number 10, 10 is. Idiot box. Number ten is idiot box. Where, where Pat, where SpongeBob and Patrick order a TV, they don't actually want the TV. They throw it in the trash. They instead they want the box that comes with it. They just want to sit in the box and use their imagination and have fun. And Squidward gets the TV, but he can't watch the TV because he hears them having so much fun in the box, and he gets jealous. This 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 episode has one of my all time favorite funny moments. Like, whenever. One of my favorite moments of the episode is when Squidward turns on his TV set, and then he go, he turns the channel, and then he says "World Championship Boxing," and then there's two boxers literally beating against <laughs> each box other. Boxers are boxing each other, yeah. And then the other part where Squidward was hearing a rocket blast off, mm, and you know, spaceship yeah. pirates. Right. Yeah, which was just SpongeBob and Patrick using their imagin imagination, but it made real sounds like this stuff was really happening. So, Sp so, Squibber, so it really works. Squibber, Squibber gets jealous and trades the real TV for the box, and Squibber and gets the in episode the box. ends really funny too. <laughs> There's nothing going on in the box, and yet. the episode ends really funny too. Mm -hmm. I, we highly recommend you watch this one if you haven't. Before. Yeah, idiot, idiot box is good, but we'll move on to the next one. Number nine. Number nine is. Wormy. Number nine is Wormy, where SpongeBob gets the little pet, worm. A pet caterpillar, or mm -hmm. worm as they call it. Mm -hmm. And Sandy brings them over to babysit it. Mm -hmm. But when it turns into a butterfly, all chaos erupts. Everybody thinks it's a big monster and it's coming to chase them and they're going to take leaving over the, the town. town. And, leaving the town in a wreck. <laughs> that butterfly. But it's really, really funny how they do the whole story. It's, it's really funny. It's a really solid episode. My favorite moment of that episode was whenever the butterfly transforms and then that SpongeBob and Patrick think they supposedly eat everything, mm -hmm. that it supposedly ate everybody. Mm -hmm. 
And when the butterfly was close, when there was a close up of the butterfly, everyone screams and then somebody disappears. Yeah. <laughs> and then SpongeBob does that puppet thing. Squidward, Mr. Krabs, Patrick. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's funny. Yeah, that's really funny. Well, we'll go on to number, number eight. Number eight. eight. Wet Painters. Wet Painters. It's an episode starring Mr. Krabs for the first part and the last part. Mm -hmm. As he invites SpongeBob and Patrick over to do a little house cleaning. Or as in this case, painting his own house from the inside. Mm -hmm. He sort of tricks him into painting his house. Mm -hmm. For money, I guess. Mm -hmm. and, it, and that's the whole episode, pretty much. But SpongeBob and Patrick make this episode. Mm -hmm. It's really funny. And I like how Spongebob is trying everything he can to make sure it doesn't touch his favorite dollar bill. And then they get one little drop, a teeny little drop of paint on the dollar bill. And then Spongebob goes crazy. And goes crazy. They try to clean the dollar. <laughs> <laughs> and it gets worse. They cover the whole dollar in the paint. That's, that's funny. I like how Patrick uses technology in the most appropriate way. Like, he takes a computer and smashes it. Mm. The technology ain't no help. No, mm -mm. that that was awesome, and especially that part about Patrick moving those title cards like one hour later, mm -hmm. two hours later, three hours, three hours later, later, and then he picks it up and then says, "Hey, hey, SpongeBob, can you hurry up? I'm out of title cards." I think that's <laughs> yeah. kind, I think that's kind of like a good fourth wall break. No, it's like a little play on it to, to let you know, yeah, this is a cartoon. It's, it's good, yeah. Okay. Okay, we'll go to number seven. Number seven is... Survival of the Idiots. Survival of the Idiots is number seven. It's an episode where Sandy invites SpongeBob over for lemonade when in actuality, it's actually about winter season. It's right before hibernation. And they're supposed to get out before the dome locks itself shut, but they don't. And then SpongeBob and Patrick are stuck there in the winter. In the winter. Trying and to get those... And it's like a six-foot snow, heavy winter inside that dome. <laughs> and they're freezing to death and about to die. And they try to figure out how to stay warm. They go up and try to... <laughs> and then try to get warm and then... This thing, they use a, don't they use a piece of tape on yeah. Sandy? And then they rip, <laughs> they rip all their the... hair off. <laughs> Uh, try yeah. to make a squirrel fur coat to try to stay warm. <laughs> and then they both play turns playing Pinhead Larry, mm -hmm. which is the thing in Sandy's dream that she wanted to get rid of. Yeah, so so she wakes up delirious and almost kills SpongeBob and Patrick because she thinks that they're Pinhead Larry. Larry. And my favorite all-time moment in this episode is one of my favorite moments in television history. Who you call a Pinhead? <laughs> Who you call Pinhead, Patrick? <laughs> he is the Pinhead. He's sharp. He's just yeah. Who you call Pinhead? He has a silly facial expression. I love that. Mm -hmm. Ah man, that's a, that's a great episode. And the guy mm -hmm. who wrote that episode made Harvey Beaks, which is a good show too. All right, we will go on to number six, and number six is. Graveyard Shift. Graveyard Shift is number six. It's about SpongeBob and Squidward about to leave the Krusty Krab, and then a customer comes in and thinks, oh, it's closed. And then Mr. Krabs makes it 24 hours a day and makes them work 24 hours a day. Which, because he wants money, money, money. And which is the almost impossible. Mm -hmm. And then it's all about Sponge Squidward and SpongeBob trying to adapt to 24 hour work. Without breaks. And it's at night time, and the lights start flickering, and Squidward makes up the story of... The hash-slinging slasher. Which is hard to say. The hash-slinging slasher, the slash-slinging hasher, the SpongeBob can't pronounce it either. Yeah. <laughs> it's really funny. Uh, my the favorite, my favorite part about that episode was when Nosferatu at the end. Oh, yeah, he's clicking, clicking the last click, 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 click. Oh, Nosferatu. And then mm. the hash singing, slinging slasher comes around. Oh, they then... show the the image of the guy coming in the dark, 
and it's just a, it's just a, it turns out to be just a one it was a little kid or something. So just a guy driving a bus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just want a Krabby Patty. <laughs> just want a Krabby Patty. So yeah, that's the Hashlingy Slasher is really funny. It's a solid episode that we wish you could check out. But mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, we'll go on to number five. Number five. Number five is. Chocolate with Nuts. Chocolate with Nuts, which is one of my all-time favorites. I do yes, I do love this one. It's about SpongeBob and Patrick having a bunch of, a crap ton of money to spend, and then they go out, out of their way to sell chocolate bars to people after buying all of it. And they run into one guy who keeps saying, Chocolate! Chocolate! He, chocolate! They think that they're trying to catch him and beat him up, and he keeps he chases them the whole episode. And it's hilarious. And it's hilarious. The whole, it's the whole, the, the whole bit's Especially hilarious. Especially how they explain how chocolate works. Mm-hmm. He has new meaning to the term, don't judge a book, or don't judge a snack by its cover. Mm -hmm. And then it turns out, at the end, the guy was chasing them the whole time just to buy, buy all their chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> he just wanted to buy all their chocolate from it. He really wanted the chocolate. And, there, and earlier in the episode, there was like one guy who was scamming them, too. Oh, uh, yeah. Of their mm -hmm. money. Yeah, one time he'd have a, a broken leg or a broken arm. But instead, I just wanted to. Wanted to I just wish I could sell all of this chocolate for my kids or something. And then, so they buy all of his chocolate. And then he pretty much scams them. <coughs> he scammed them the whole time. But it turns out at the end, the guy who chased them the whole time, yelling chocolate, ended up buying all of their chocolate. So it was. So it was really, really funny. Okay, that was really funny. We'll go down to number four, and number four is. Sailor Mouth. Number four is Sailor Mouth, which is We're, it's really funny. Really funny. It's really the funny. show. This episode parodies censorship. It's about SpongeBob and SpongeBob reading the back of a dumpster one day, and then Rep repeating and the words that were on the dumpster on the Mister Krabs, and he says that Ear! it makes the porpoise sound. <laughs> yep. It said he used them to flavor. His speech. His speech. <laughs> Which gets Mr. Krabs angry. It gets Mr. Krabs angry, and it says that there are seven dirty words that you don't say, Mr. Krab. Which is actually real. Mm-hmm. So, uh, the, the whole episode is about them saying, uh, learn, learning not to say the bad words, and Mr. Krab makes them, again, he makes them go over and paint his house or something, doesn't he, for saying the bad words? Goes over to get spanked by his mama. Uh, yeah, and then he steps on the rake and says a bad word. Oh, he, his mama says, steps on the rake and says a bad word, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's funny at the end of But, yeah. And Old Man Jenkins makes an appearance in this episode. Oh. Well, Old Man Jenkins is, is one of my favorite reoccurring characters. He comes in he gets, and just makes a quick, funny moment, and then it's over. But he's, he's funny. And yeah. we're going to number three. And, and number three is... Pizza delivery. Number three is pizza delivery. One of us a favorite. Mm, it is one of the favorites. It's SpongeBob, uh, Mr. Krabs. Mr. Krabs orders SpongeBob to deliver a pizza to an unknown he come because he, he, he thinks he can make more money making pizzas just as, as part of his store. So he so Pete, SpongeBob is the delivery guy. Not only SpongeBob, but Squidward. Mm -hmm. And there's also some references to SpongeBob's voting school, where Squidward tries to tell SpongeBob where the right gears are and what the gas is. But they get lost out in the desert. He, and as you'd expect him to do, he'd floor it. He floors it. Yeah, he. Uh, SpongeBob is dedicated. You know, uh, they're starving for food, but SpongeBob won't eat the food because he wants to be dedicated to deliver the pizza. That's his job to deliver the pizza. Uh, they even they get on a rock and drive a rock around, and it was really. And then they get carried by a tornado. The Krusty Krab, help you love. I love when he, uh, when yeah, he sings that. Ah, yeah, that's that's a great moment. I love that one too. Yeah, the best moment was SpongeBob when SpongeBob was yodeling to a big old trucker, a big rigger, and mm. then holy flying flying spaceships, <laughs> yeah, or something like that. Something like that, yeah. 
That's a great funny episode. But that's a really good one. And then we're gonna we're down to the top two. Number two is Here's a favorite. Ripped pants. Ripped pants. Which honestly it's really it's really one of my it's one of my cartoons that I will remember the rest of my life. It's it's just Hilarious. SpongeBob accidentally rips his pants in front of all the beachgoers. And he's embarrassed about it, but everybody laughs so hard. SpongeBob takes advantage of it and rips his pants over and over and over. With and a bunch of, with a band. Yeah. He eventually goes on a concert and sings My one of the. My favorite part is when he goes up to the ice cream stand to get some ice cream and he says, How about some ripple? <laughs> <laughs> and he throws his butt up in the air with the with the ripped pants, and it's, uh, and he it's goes funny. up on he goes up on stage and probably sings one of the mo one of the most iconic sh songs in a cartoon. Yeah, he finally makes everybody mad uh, about going over the ripped ripped pants. He gets on a surfboard and pretends to drown, and they have to come up and save him. And everybody says, "Oh, this is about me." Because oh, I ripped my pants, <laughs> and he makes everybody mad. And then he uh, sings the epic song at the at the end of it. It's just one of the most iconic episodes, and probably one of the most infamous episodes of the show. It's, it's actually an episode, episode. It's actually the uh, regular season episode number one behind the pilot help wanted. Yeah, there was the pilot, and then that was episode number one after it. So it's appropriate. Yeah, you know, so it was one of it was definitely one of my favorites. So we're now now we're going to get to number one. So, number one is... Band Geeks. Band Geeks is number one. It is the only, really the only episode where Squidward is the star and Squidward... Wins. Wins. Everything happens good for Squidward at the end of it. What's the story? The story is when Squidward gets a call from Squilliam. His arch rival. Mm -hmm. well, Squ and Squilliam's a, a squid who is successful at everything he's ever done. And Squidward's been the one who's been successful at nothing he's ever done. So they're sort of his arch rival from high school. And mm -hmm. then Squilliam says that he'd have to build him a band to, at the next night, by the next night. And then Squidward... Goes around at this orchestra and hilarity ensues, mm -hmm. especially when in that or trying to train up the band. Like, yeah, yeah, he needs uh, Squidward to build to fill in for him at the next concert. At the, it's like the the Super Bowl halftime show. I can't, I don't, I don't know what it was. Yeah, but they go at the, they do the Super Bowl halftime show, and Squidward's trying to get everybody trained, SpongeBob and Patrick and Sandy and all of them. Trying to get them trained to be his band, so he can go show Squiggum that he can have a band. And Squidward thinks that they're going to fail miserably because they cannot. Um, <laughs> they cannot learn. They cannot be taught. They do everything wrong, especially Plankton. <laughs> yeah, they mess and up. especially when Sandy and Patrick. <laughs> they end up fighting and almost having war and breaking windows out of the practice hall because they can't get along to practice. But when it all comes time, they go up for the half. To, the, well, I, I guess Squidward sort of gets brokenhearted, like this is never going to work, and and he leaves the SpongeBob. And blocks. then SpongeBob. All will... right, this is our friend. We're going to get this done. Blah blah blah. They practice the whole night. They show up at the halftime show. Sing a Squidward's, awesome song. Squidward's like, it ain't going to work. And then they sing an awesome sweet, song. Sweet, sweet, sweet victory. They sing an awesome song. They sing an awesome, awesome song, and Squidward's yeah. Rock and roll, and then it ends with Squidward finally getting a victory. That is one of the best episodes of any show I've ever watched, period. Mm. Yeah. There's nothing that can compare to it, nothing that could compete with it, mm -hmm. and it by far deserves the number one choice. Mm -hmm. Now, we did realize we left out a lot of episodes, even after we made the... It's so hard to pick out 15. It's hard to pick out 20 or 30 and we realized we left out some. Like I just realized we left out the so, Flying Dutchman. Yeah, he's and he a is great. one of my all-time favorites. I love when they're trapped on his boat and they got to serve him and uh, try to go out and scare people. Boo! 
and uh, I, I guess that's the, that was the Halloween special, wasn't it? The, we left out the Halloween special. We left out the Christmas special. Those are some of my all-time favorites. So there's a lot. I know we, I realize we left out a lot. If you want to throw down in the comments some of your favorites that we might have left off, uh, that would be that that that, that would be awesome. But uh, undoubtedly, SpongeBob is one of those shows that you mm -hmm. can pick multiple episodes, but you can't really choose. No. If you've got a different number one, let us know what your number one is. But that concludes our SpongeBob weekend. Sadly. Sadly. But we are going to do a, a review of the new Powerpuff Girls reboot next week. Next week. Next week. Next week. We should be able to have it done Friday-ish or something like that. And then we're going to uh, watch a couple movies. Watch The Jungle Book. The Jungle Book. We're going to watch it and do a review for it. And then, again, we've been asked to watch what could be the worst movie in the history of cartoons. But it's so epically bad. That we have to watch we it. We have to watch it. We're going to suffer ourselves. So, so and that is... That's the schedule that's coming food up. Food fight. We're food fight. That's yeah. the schedule that's coming but up. But that's the schedule of the next three things that we're going to be doing. So uh, be sure and like us. Be sure and subscribe so you can uh, get notifications when we get some new stuff out. Other than that, I think we're done. Yes, we are. And see you next week. Bye. <laughs>